And then the man starts to get quiet. She just wanted to go home. Hey, what's up, you guys? It's your boy, Ty Tun. And in today's story time, I'm gonna be telling you about a stalker Uber driver. Now, before I get into the story, I just wanna let you guys know a couple things. This is not my story, it's a subscriber story. I accidentally answered a Snapchat video call and it happened to be a subscriber and her mother. And I say accidentally because I never answer Snapchat calls because it's just awkward. And at first it was awkward, but then they started telling me some stories of their own. But this one story they told me, I was like, I have to do a story time on it. And they said that I could, but I'm gonna be changing her name in the story for like privacy reasons. But yeah, I thought it would be a cool idea to start telling your guys' stories on my channel. So I think I'm gonna create another email where you guys can send your story times if you guys want me to share them on my YouTube channel. I haven't created it yet, but it should be created by the time you guys see this video, so I'll just put it right here on the screen, and I'll also put it in the description box below. So that way you guys can just email me your story times, and I'll know that these are the ones that wanna be shared on my YouTube channel. Okay, this intro is being, okay, this intro is way too long, so I'm gonna need you to give this video a big fat thumbs up, subscribe to my channel to become part of the Thai fam, and ring that notification bell so you can get notified every time I post. Also, don't forget to follow me on Instagram and on Snapchat at T-Y-E underscore T-U-N. I have not been responding though because every time I respond, you guys just blow me up with more messages and I'm trying to like read through all of them and I can't because you guys are sending so many messages. So if you see me read your message, just know that I'm not ignoring you. I'm just not going to respond. So that way y'all don't continuously blow up my DMs, okay? <laughs> now with all that being said, let's get into today's story. Now the girl we're gonna be talking about in this story time, we're gonna name her Shay. Now at this particular time, Shay could not drive, but she did have a job. So her mom would usually take her to and from work. And her workplace was about 15 to 20 minutes away from her house. Now on this particular day, Shay's mother wasn't able to take her to work. So they decided that Shay's mom was gonna order an Uber for Shay to get to work and for Shay to come home. And this wasn't something new to them because they did it quite often. Whenever Shay's mom couldn't take her to work, she would just get her Ubers back and forth. So it started out as any other day. Shay's mom called for the Uber and the Uber came to the house, picked up Shay and took her to work. But after work is where the real story starts. So Shay finishes up work and she clocks out and she calls her mom. And she just lets her know like, hey, I'm done work. Can you give me an Uber to come back home? So her mother orders the Uber, but the Uber is going to take 20 minutes to get to where Shay is. So Shay tells her mom okay, and then she hangs up the phone. So she's hanging outside of her workplace, and she's just like on her phone, you know, on social media, checking her messages and whatnot. She notices that her phone is about to die, but she decides not to charge it because the Uber is already on its way. Now normally, when Shay's mom would get her an Uber, she would just call her and tell her that the Uber's out front. But since Shay's phone was about to die, she just texted her mom and was like, hey, what's the details of the car that's supposed to pick me up? And her mom doesn't give much detail. All she says is that it's a black car and he's about 15 minutes away. Then Shay replies to her mom and says thanks, and then her mother responds to that and tells her to text her when she gets into her Uber so she knows she's okay. And then Shay tells her mom that she can't because her phone is about to die and she doesn't know if it's going to die before the Uber gets there or not. And her mother just doesn't respond at that point. So Shay decides to just stand there and wait for her Uber. Now not even five minutes go by, a black car pulls up in front of Shay and she just assumes that it is her Uber. Because her mom was so vague in the text messages, she didn't know what type of car, the license plate number, or even what the driver was supposed to look like. Those are things that you should definitely know before getting into an Uber. So she walks up to the car and in the driver's seat is a middle-aged white man. From her description of him, he seemed really friendly and warm and inviting and safe. Then he looks in her direction, he gives her a little smile, and he rolls down the passenger side window and says, 
Are you Shay so and so? Not just her first name, but her last name as well. Now this is alarming because her mother was the one who ordered the Uber, so therefore the mother's information would have popped up and not Shay's. And on top of that, I don't think Uber drivers know your last name. I think they just know your first name. I'm not 100% sure. If you guys know, let me know down in the comments. But I'm pretty sure they just know your first name. Now, Shay didn't even notice that this man knew her first and last name, and she shakes her head yes, and she gets into the back seat of his car. When they were telling me the story over the call, and it got to that part, I was like, you got in the car? But she said she wasn't really paying attention enough to notice any of these red flags. She just wanted to go home. I guess that just goes to show you, like, you really have to pay attention to things like this. So Shay gets in the backseat of his car and she pulls out her phone and she's about to text her mother that she got into the car. Now before she can even finish writing her text message to her mother, her phone dies and the Uber driver starts to pull off. Now she asked him if there was any sort of charger in his car that she could use because a lot of the times Ubers do have chargers for you to charge your phone. But the man apologized and told her that he did not have any in his car at the moment. Now while they were driving, the man kept asking Shay like all these random questions about like where she's from and where does she go to school, how's her family doing. Now in Shay's mind, she just thought that he was being friendly because normally Uber drivers, you know, they ask you questions to keep the conversation going so the ride isn't so stale, you know? But there was one thing that he said that really stuck out to her. He asked her if she was getting into anything crazy tonight or if she was going to be a good girl. Now, I don't know about you, but I would not want a middle-aged man asking me if I was going to be a good girl. Even though I'm a boy, but that's besides the point. It's just creepy. Now, she thought it was weird, but she just kind of laughed it off and was like, no, I'm not getting into anything tonight. I'm just going to be home with my dogs doing homework. And then the man gets really into her dogs. He starts asking all these questions about what kind of dogs they are, how big are they, how many do you have? Do you keep them inside or do you guys have them outside? Are they trained to attack people? Now Shay doesn't really have intimidating dogs. They're just two little chihuahuas and they're like this big, like literally like that big. Now again, she thought his questions were weird, but she just shrugged it off and answered his questions honestly. So Shay told him that she had two chihuahuas, they're not aggressive, they keep him inside, but they don't ever bite anybody. Like she's just giving him all the answers that he wanted. Then he says something really alarming. He looks at her in the rearview mirror and says, that's not very good, Shay. You need dogs that will be able to protect you just in case somebody breaks in your house. Now, if that isn't a sign to tuck and roll out that car, I don't know what is. I would have opened that door and jumped out. I don't care how fast we was going. I'd rather jump out of his car and break my neck than be sitting in it with him. Now at this point in the ride, when he's talking about someone breaking into Shay's house, she looks out the window and she notices that he is passing her neighborhood. And then finally it clicked in her head that this man was dangerous. So she remains calm and she doesn't panic. Meanwhile, her Uber driver is going into great detail about how somebody could break into her house, how somebody could harm her, how somebody could kidnap her, how somebody can hurt her family. And he's just going on and on and on and he's saying it so nonchalantly as if it was like something normal to talk about. And in Shay's head, she's thinking about a way for this man to take her home. And the only thing that she can think of doing is talking about how her dad is chief of police and he has eyes on her at all times. Her dad isn't even chief of police and on top of that, he's not even in her life. It was just Shay and her mom. So she starts making up all these stories about how her dad is chief of police and her mom is in the FBI and they find missing people all the time. She starts telling him a story about how someone broke into their house and their parents shot him down. Like she's just saying all these crazy things to get this man to think that she is not the girl that he wants to mess with. And the crazy thing is, thank God it worked. And then the man starts to get quiet. The Uber driver starts looking around in the area and he's like, oh God, Shay, I'm sorry, I definitely passed your neighborhood. And he turns the car around and he takes Shay to her house. But before he drops her off, she notices another thing. The man never had his phone out, which means he wasn't using GPS that entire time to even know that he passed Shay's house. And I know some of you guys are young, so I don't know if you guys ever took an Uber before, but normally they would have their phone propped up somewhere and it would have the GPS on it so that way they knew exactly where they are taking you. And he did not have that at all. Now, as soon as he pulls up in front of her house, 
The man tells her to have a nice day. Shay doesn't respond to him. She just gets out of his car, shuts the door, and proceeds to walk into her house. And her Uber driver pulls off. Now when Shay gets inside, she locks out her doors and charges her phone. When her phone finally comes on, she has all these text messages and all these missed calls from her mother. She immediately calls her mom back and her mom is freaking out. And she's like, where are you? Why haven't you answered all my calls? Why haven't you answered all my texts? Like, where are you? And then Shay explains everything to her mother. And then her mom's confused and she's like, what are you talking about? You never got into the Uber. It says it on my phone that it got canceled. Which means Shay never even got into the right car. The man that picked her up was not her Uber driver. It was just a random man with a random black car. And it's super creepy because it's like, how did he know where she was going to be to pick her up? How did he know her name? And how did he know where she lived? Like her exact house, not just the neighborhood. And supposedly they reported everything to the police and the police have found nothing. Till this day, nothing. And she told me this happened about three years ago. But let me tell y'all, when they told me this story, I was like, oh my god. And I thought I had some crazy stories, but that one was pretty crazy. So I figured I'd share it with you guys today. But that was the whole story that they told me. I hope you guys can take away um, some good lessons from this story. Please watch out for red flags. If anything is making you uncomfortable, please get out of that situation. Call the police if you have to. And oh my god, my camera is dying, of course. So let me do these story time shout outs before I forget. Okay, today's story time shout outs go to Nightmare, The Foxy Wolf, Ellie Golden, Billie Eilish, not the real one. Mimi Compilations, and Neely Strode. I hope I pronounced your name right. I'm not 100% sure if I did. But congratulations on everybody who won today's Storytime shoutouts. If you guys want to be featured in Tuesday's Storytime shoutouts, all you have to do is leave your best story time in the comment section down below. And the top five stories will get shoutouts in Tuesday's Storytime video. And don't forget to vote for your favorite story by reading a couple of them and giving them a like. And I guess also now, if you want your story to be featured in a YouTube video, email me your best story time. It can be whatever you want it to be. As long as it is really good, I will feature it. Um, like I said in the beginning, the email will be in the description box below. So yeah, I can't wait to read some of you guys' stories. And with all that being said, my camera is officially on like 2%, so I definitely have to go. Everybody stay safe, wash your hands, and stay inside. I will see you guys on Friday. I love you guys so much. Bye.